Nick Sharia here and welcome to my first video on this channel. I'd like to give a special thanks to Coach Daniel for allowing me to produce these videos. Today, I'm bringing you how Chris Paul took over the second half in Game 3 against the Utah Jazz. Let's get going. Before we talk about Chris Paul, we have to talk about Blake Griffin. In the second quarter of Game 3, Griffin landed awkwardly and injured his big toe. He did not return and he's since been ruled out for the season. With Griffin out, Paul ramped up his attack, something that shouldn't come as a surprise. With Griffin off of the court this season, Paul has seen a bump in points and assists per 36 minutes, along with increases in his usage and true shooting percentages. In the second half against the Jazz, we saw exactly this type of effect. He scored 24 points and added 3 assists, while posting a 48% usage percentage and a 68% true shooting percentage in the half, according to NBA.com stats. So how did Chris Paul help the Clippers eke out a victory in Utah? You can see here that Joe Ingles picks up Paul nearly three quarters court off of George Hill's miss. Paul attacks the semi-transition opportunity and Ingles is caught backpedaling. Derek Favors stays with DeAndre Jordan on the roll and Boris Diaw's arm help isn't enough to stop Paul. The Clippers flow into pick and roll action with Paul and Jordan right off of this sideline out of bounds. Notice that the weak side corner is vacant, meaning DL has backside help on the roll man. Ingles takes a wide angle over top Jordan's screen as DeAndre sticks his elbow out to push him off the optimal route. DL tags DeAndre on the roll, but doesn't stay long enough for favors to recover. On this pick and roll, DL comes out higher than you will see Utah defend most PNR situations. Unfortunately, Diao's hedge leaves too much room in between him and Hill, and Paul splits the two of them. Favors doesn't jump off the ground quickly enough, and Paul finishes through the contact for the M1. Jordan sets a high ball screen for Paul here, and Favors' hips aren't positioned in a way to contain CP3. Because of that, he gets beat and it forces Hayward to help. Young guards, check out how Paul uses his eyes to keep both weak side defenders in Hood and Johnson honest, and then he slings a lefty bounce pass to LR Man for the lane. And when you're hitting shots like this, you are in some type of groove. Hill goes under DeAndre's high ball screen here, so Jordan immediately rescreens closer to the basket. Now Favors has both Paul and DeAndre coming at him downhill. When Favors commits to Paul, CP3 lobs it to DeAndre for the dunk. Hayward switches onto Paul here, and there's just not a whole lot he can do after getting a chest full of DeAndre's elbow. The Clippers run a double high ball screen for Paul on this play. George Hill switches onto Crawford, meaning Ingles is left with Paul. Ingles forces Paul's sideline, expecting Favors' drop to contain CP3 but Favors is instead attached to DeAndre, giving Paul a clear lane to the basket. Hayward steps up, and there's no one on the backside to defend LR Man. DeAndre sets yet another ball screen for Paul. Favors comes out high to defend him, and Hayward comes over to help on the roll man. Now keying on Hill, who is confused on his responsibility. Favors expects him to be there when he drops off of Paul, but he's not. The Clippers run the same double high ball screen again here. Ingles gets slightly bumped off his route when he makes contact with Jordan and he never gets back in front of Paul. Favors is flat footed and he doesn't deter Paul's shot. And the Clippers call on the same action one more time. Ingles once again has trouble getting through Jordan's screen, this time because of DeAndre's wide base. Favors comes over to help on Paul's shot, but CP3 banks it in anyway. And that's all I have for this one. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more fresh content in the near future.